The years of stalemate on the Western Front were decisively ended in August 1918 when the Allied nations launched the first of a series of offensives that drove the German army out to France and threatened to take the war onto German soil, forcing the German government to sue for peace. The resulting armistice came into effect at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. The Great War had ended with an Allied victory. The Road to Victory series reveals the parts played by the Army Corps during 1918 and the final phase of the war, the period which came to be known as the 100 Days Offensive. This is the Army School of Physical Training, or ASPT, the home of the Royal Army Physical Training Corps. The Corps was formed in 1860 as the Army Gymnastics Star, the AGS, with instructors attached to every unit of the British Army with a mandate to lead troops in all aspects of physical training. During World War I, the ASPT was used for training AGS and assistant PT instructors. Much of the training took place here, in Fox Gym. Training required soldiers to master progressively demanding gymnastic exercises and negotiate the high walls, ropes and other obstacles of the assault course, all designed to build hardiness, agility and strength. Those who passed were sent to train the new armies at depots across Britain, as well as with units serving in France. In command of the latter was Major Ronnie Campbell, who was to revolutionise training in the trenches. A powerful and charismatic figure, Campbell was reputably the first member of the British Expeditionary Force to land in France in 1914. In March 1916, we find him in the role of Deputy Inspector of Gymnasia, leading a group of 52 AGS instructors across the Channel. These were deployed at training depots and in reserve trenches behind the front line. Campbell recognised that the extreme conditions of the trenches was taking a heavy physical and psychological toll on Allied forces. To counter this, he introduced a daily regime of sports, assault course and bayonet training for all troops as they rotated out of the line. This physical exertion strengthened bodies, relieved stress and raised morale amongst troops. Bayonet fighting involved two soldiers sparring with one another, protected by padded jackets and steel and leather masks. A target ring was used for precision jabs. Campbell was a particular supporter of the therapeutic properties of cold steel. He toured the front with Campbell's Circus, including champion boxers such as Billy Wells and Jimmy Driscoll. These gave shockingly realistic displays of bayonet fighting without protective equipment. As they fought, Campbell would harangue the audience, raising them to a frenzy with his bloodthirsty rhetoric, leaving troops with their spirits considerably lifted. To make battle training as effective as possible, Campbell personally observed raids on German trenches, fine-tuning lessons on the basis of what he had seen and learned. Professional wrestlers in the AGS provided lessons in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, whilst new weapons captured from the Germans were delivered to Campbell to devise counterattacks. This micro-training made soldiers stronger, deadlier and far more effective. By the end of the war, the bloody Campbell was one of the most famous figures on the Western Front and was personally marked for reprisals by the German army. By 1918, the HQ School of Campbell's physical and bayonet training staff was at St. Paul in northern France. A flag for the school was sourced locally, but accidentally constructed on a miniature scale after a linguistic misunderstanding with French flag makers. Intensive six-day training courses for officers and NCOs were held at the school, with the flag being presented to the best performing section on each course. The training area at St Paul featured a vast array of booby-trapped houses, assault courses and realistic trench systems, constructed using the latest reconnaissance of German trenches. AGS instructors relentlessly drilled students in the latest methods of trench warfare, with boxing and intersection competitions used to bring men to peak efficiency. Instructors taught using frequently updated training manuals that addressed issues learnt from earlier in the war, such as special exercises to aid bomb throwing. On completion, students would return to their units and disseminate this training. This was particularly important in helping new formations, such as the American Army, acclimatise to the realities of modern warfare. 
In March 1918, the St. Paul School found itself in the path of the German Spring Offensive. Allied forces were pushed back a huge distance by Western Front standards and suffered over 800,000 casualties. Yet they had the resilience to absorb the shock, these terrible losses, to halt the German advance and then go on the offensive. As the fighting neared St. Paul, staff and students prepared for battle. Company Sergeant Major Instructor Donald Lynch commanded a platoon comprising a Major, Captain, two Lieutenants and 16 NCOs. He marched this unorthodox unit off to try to find the enemy, much to the consternation of Allied High Command when they heard its composition. Lynch wore this belt during the 1918 campaign. Along with a picture of his wife, the attached badges point to his accomplishments as a sharpshooter and his former army career as a territorial and army bugler before joining the AGS in 1916. The rosary he found in the ruins of the St. Paul School after the German offensive had been beaten back. A new school was opened at Hardelot Plage where Lynch drew a series of sketches of training and instructors. Courses restarted in May and continued throughout the rest of the war. These provided invaluable battlefield training for the inexperienced new recruits being fed into the cauldron of the Western Front. This constant supply of trained manpower was crucial to the ability of Allied High Command to maintain the Hundred Days Offensive. The Hundred Days involved weary troops marching through land destroyed by earlier battles and in the face of bitter German resistance. The ability of Allied forces to maintain this advance was largely due to the physical training and morale strengthening exercises they had received. This provided them with the stamina and psychological capability to adapt to a war of movement, to absorb an enormous number of casualties, to repeatedly engage the enemy in battle and ultimately defeat him.